Sound Collider by John Hopkins today. With that said, I'm plugging the new EP I have coming out with Anitha called It's Okay to Cry. Go ahead and check that out. Pre-orders are available now, and the full release will be up on November 26th. There's previews on SoundCloud. All this is in the description. Check it out. Fast techno. All right. This was a fun one to do. Now, I'm going to be skipping some details this time around. Normally, I map out things pretty closely. I, I, I did... I think for a while, but then it just got too crazy. So I, and I decided, you know, it's not, it'd take me so long to map this perfect. Let's just focus on like the main concepts going on uh, because there are some really interesting things happening here that kind of happened in other songs we've done, but uh, it feels different this time around and we'll, we'll get into it. So, okay. Like I didn't even map this first part, but basically you're just gonna get a little crangly, like percussive, thing. All right, and now we really get going. <laughs> so this little, that's going to be a recurring theme, that big like white noise smash. And then the pumping bass line that's just hitting a single note um, on every beat. So this could be a little better organized, but it's it's such a big project that's gonna be changing around a lot. By the way, the project file for this and the MIDI clips are free. Here's how you get them. So you're gonna type in patreon.com. And I go Alex Wilcox, music tutorials. Now, if you wanna be awesome, you'll, you'll do one of these, but you know, these are free. So you can just scroll down to recent posts by Alexander Wilcox, click the link and you can download these uh, project files. That's how you do it, right there. You click that. Tell me if there's a problem, it should work fine. And if you feel so inclined and you want some other stuff, check this out. So, okay, so basically in this, we have that crangly, like it looks like about four bars. Uh, yep, about four bars. And then we have the intro of the bass line, introduction of the bass line rather. And we have this kind of like chord that slowly seems to be gaining in volume. It's we have some little vocal situation going on. Sounds like a little like reverse, little and then we have this pumping white noise, et cetera, et cetera. And then um, we're about to get into like our main groove. Uh, but let me point out a couple other things real fast. Okay, so the bass line obviously starts to modulate and then we get this little... Sounds really nice in the headphones, especially uh, that what happens right there. This kind of nice pan right to left. And I wanna point something out. We, I think we've talked about this before, but sometimes when you're going from one section to another and you're trying to create like a cool, uh, just powerful transition, one of the things you can mess with is your mono to stereo um, like ratio. And what I mean by that is You'll notice right before this beat comes in, the mix gets pretty mono right here. See hear that? So if, if you are listening to this on one speaker, you might not really be able to tell much, but if you have headphones on, you'll notice that like right around here, everything is pr not, it, it's pretty centered. Like the mix is pretty centered. And then right when the beat comes in, it gets wide again. Cool. All right. So. That's just like a nice trick you can do. And like one way to do that, if you had like a utility on Ableton, this with controls, this is all mono, this is all stereo at 200, 100% is regular. Uh, one thing you can do is you can just drop this on a mono or drop this on your master or drop this on whatever thing you want to mono and you could literally like do something like that. So then, so then it starts to get mono right before it comes back in. So, okay, now we have this kick and off beat going. Let's let's get everything else 
in order here. I'm just going to keep flipping it around as we go because... All right. So we're just going to start having our beat. We got our kick. We got our offbeat. We've got this like kibasa thing that comes in, like a wooden percussive sound here. That moan, which to me is kind of like... I mean, that and the bass line are really kind of powering this. We still have that chord just like hanging out in the back. And then obviously there's our bass line, and then we're going to have another drum up here. There's going to be a lot. All right. Hopefully I'm not having to talk so much the whole time, but okay, here we go. Okay, so that was, let's see, that was about 40 seconds, and a lot happened in those 40 seconds. Now, if you've watched this channel before, you know, well, you know what, let me wait for a second. We're going to listen to this chunk one more time, and just try and take note of how many things change while this, um, while this thing occurs. I'll, I'll still have the screen being shown. But actually, you know what? Maybe I'm going to, maybe I'll blank it out. Let's see what I decide in editing. But uh, just listen to how many things happen in this 40 second chunk, okay? Like if you hear like the clap get louder, you know, make a note of that. If you hear something enter, make a note of that. If you hear the offbeat change, make a note of that, okay? Here we go. Okay, pretty wild, right? So that was only, that's 20 bars. And I, like, hopefully you noticed some things coming in and out and changing and whatever. So I'll point out some of the things I noticed. So right away, we have the beat start, and then we have this, like, kibasa thing. It might be, like, a little, might be starting a little more like there, but this starts coming in. <laughs> And then I noticed this like, it sounds like a C78, I think maybe, the C78 snare. It might, it might not be the C78, but it's something kind of like that. That starts to play here. Okay, so that's already, we're only four bars in. We've already had like a, one element enter in, then another element enter in. So that we're like, that's that's pretty quick. And now I noticed the kibasa, I'm, I'm just calling this the kibasa, uh, it starts to open up here. So now we have an element that's already existing, changing, and we're still only in the first eight bars. Um, so, okay, so we're getting a lot of modulation there. And it's closing again, that's opening up again. Okay, now we have an extra layer of the offbeat. So you'll hear, by the offbeat, I mean if you're going one and two and three and four and boots and cats, the offbeat is the nts. You'll hear the nts gets more powerful here. Okay, and then we also have the introduction of this like anxious sounding notes or chord. Then 
we have this big white noise smash and then reverb tail. Okay, so the reason why I wanted you to listen was because one of the coolest things I took away from the breakdown of this track is this this thing is just loaded with detail and with a very much constantly changing sound palette. So this is why, like, if you think about some of the other breakdowns we've done, um, especially in the realm of techno, it's it's very common that we have. Um, let me just let me just take this for example. You know, it's very common that we have a song. Here, wait. Okay, give me a second. Okay, it's very common that we have a song where, let's say, let's let's not we don't even need this many things. Okay, let's say that the song is made of three parts. I mean, usually it's like four or something. The track will play, and then as it goes on, there'll be a part of the song where now there's only these two parts. And then there might be a part of the song where it's just that part. And then there's a part where all three parts are back. See, all three parts are back, but now this one's modulated. So now it's a little different sounding. Maybe instead of just an offbeat, now, it's an offbeat where it's it's like this. Like maybe now this offbeat is having an extra hit every other offbeat. You know, we're getting a modulation of a track that already exists. And it's these different combinations. See like dark blue, light blue, green, then just light blue and green, then just green, then pink, light blue and green. It's these different combinations of the things that we have that keep the track interesting because, um, you know, it's a our, our brains are hearing a new sound palette and that just like helps keep things interesting. And uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a combination we haven't heard before and so it's nice to hear. Now, in a lot of the tracks we've done, the structure is more or less like this with, you know, some, I'm generalizing a bit here, but in the sense that like, it's like, here's eight bars. Here's your new eight bars with a new combination. Here's your new eight bars with a new combination. Here's your new eight bars with a new combination, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The thing that is interesting about this is that the same kind of like principle is applying in the sense of you're getting a constantly changing, you're, you're getting a changing sound palette rather that uh, I think is what helps keep the ideas interesting because you don't feel like you're just hearing the exact same loop over and over again. But what makes this track special to me is that it is just constantly changing. You're not waiting every, you're not waiting every four bars, you're not waiting every eight bars. There is a constant movement of uh, sounds and modulations occurring that I think that just really helps uh, us just build and build and build on this one. Plus something about, it's, it's cool to me too how while the overall sound palette is constantly evolving and I'm going to stop talking soon so don't worry but like this is just the best way I felt like I could go about doing this this video but as you're having this rapidly changing sound palette you always have that kick and that bass and that offbeat just doing a very simple job just keeping your sense of like it's just like keeping a nice foundation and you know who doesn't love just a strong kick offbeat and a strong bass note? It's something you can groove to. It's so, so simple. And uh, yeah, I think that's kind of one way I perceive this track. You have that strong foundation and then a constantly changing like tapestry of sound over it. And yeah, so that's why we listened to this, that like 40 second chunk, because I just wanted you to see, look how many things are changing in just this 40 seconds. Um, and that kind of happens this entire time. For the, like this entire buildup at the beginning, things are just changing constantly. So let's just keep listening. And with that, with what I've just said in mind, uh, you know, just, just try and see if you can notice these individual elements changing. And then once in a while, I'll, uh, I'll uh, pause and we'll talk about it, okay? And last thing, like even this reverb smash coming in. <laughs> Even that counts as like a changing of the sound tapestry because yeah, it's just a, a hit here, but then you have that reverb tail. And so now you're hiring all this stuff with the reverb tail, which you like hadn't had before. And unless it happens at the very beginning, no. So yeah, this is a crazy one, but all right, let's keep listening.
The crazy thing is, is we're only at two minutes and 30 seconds. And I feel like so many things just happened. Um, I'll point out a few of them. But uh, again, I, I've already told you kind of the main concept driving this song. And I think that's that's what's cool to, to think about. And also, or yeah, I'll just talk about it now. Fuck it. Um, so basically, for this first, uh, like this is just such a build. Oftentimes, we usually have a release sooner. But I feel like at this point, we're still very much just building and building and building. Like a lot of times, you know, a song is tension, release, tension, release, and there is going to be some release eventually on this song. Uh, but I think it's part of what makes the song so special is just the amount of tension that you get before the release. It's just it's just so much. It just keeps building it more than normal. But OK, at least from what I've heard and have broken down on this channel, especially. So. All right. Um, here's some things that happened. Um, well, let's just, okay. So just in general, these like anxious sounding chords, the it sounds like they might be getting more prominent here. If not more prominent, like, especially here, like, more higher frequencies are coming out. Yeah. I'd say it's, like, more present in the mix here. So, like, that's kind of, like, again, one of those, like, colors that's that's being spread across this, uh, uh, like, strong foundation of that kick and bass. It's just kind of washing around here. The bass line might be a little more open here than earlier. Let's, let's listen again. I'm actually not positive on that because it also sounds like the kick is kind of having more high end too. But that could be because there's just more high frequencies and other elements. And so it's making the sound kick, making the kick sound like it had a higher frequency added. I'm not exactly sure to be honest. Um, but yeah, then we're having this like vocoded sounding, vo I'm guessing it's a vocoded vocal. <laughs> And because it has that long tail, again, this is just like another color just thrown over this beat. More offbeat. So listen, the offbeat gets even crazier here. And just to like do a quick recap, when we just started the beat, you'd had this small stereo offbeat. Boom. If, again, if you just have one speaker, that don't worry about it. It's... But if you have headphones, you can really hear this hitting in the stereo, like left and right, this offbeat. And then you have the addition of this layer. And now already it's getting even crazier, another layer. So now the offbeat is just huge. And like, check this out. If I isolate this the audio from the track and then throw an auto filter on here, so we're just getting the uh, top end. Like, listen how much offbeat you hear. There's so much going on in that frequency range. And this like stretched 808 came in as well. Oh, yeah. That zzz, that high end thing that's pumping. And I want to note how, note how there's these offbeat, or there's these white noise smashes happening, right? But even the white noise smashes are different. They're not exactly the same. Like, listen to this one, then we'll listen to this one. Like, even just having those being different sounds probably helps to, I think, keep you interested. Because, again, so many things are changing that I feel like it's hard for you to get so bored. Because, again, you just have this ever-evolving thing of sound and then like this sneaks in there there's this three note percussive thing i don't know if you noticed that that kind of started sneaking in so check this out just just watch on this one here Like I swear, at least like 
when I was just listening to this song, I, I didn't even notice that kind of came in. And yeah, so just look at all this. Super cool, right? Um, all right, I'm probably going to stop talking again because I'm kind of just going to repeat myself at this point. I, I will talk, whatever. Let, let's see when I decide to talk next. Uh, I'm going to talk already. Like this little like wood block smash. Like I don't even know. Maybe that does happen again. But like again, like that. Even if it only happens that one time, it, again, there's just so many little details in this track. It's it's so cool. Again, just very nice.
Yeah, I stopped here because I realized this is going to take forever to map out perfectly and I don't think I need to. But okay, I just let it play for a really long time because uh, there's another concept I want to talk about or another thing I noticed at least. So you already you already get the, the main thing that I wanted to bring up, which is you have this solid foundation and then this rapidly and very continuously swirling around tapestry of sound by having the introduction of new elements, the modulation of pre-existing elements, uh, just constantly, constantly changing. Now there's just a couple other small things I want to note. Um, just another thing that I find interesting, and it's just another way to keep the tapestry constantly flowing, is also just by, because, you know, that if you change the kick and the bass in a song like this, it's, it's going to have a pretty big effect. So I like how every once in a while you get something like this. I know this is normal, you know, take out the low end, like you have the low end of the kick leave. You have the bass lines. It sounds like it goes up an octave. Uh, and then you just come back in. But I like how, it, you know, it... it only like nine kicks leave and then you come right back in like it, it you know again it's just not moving at the at the most typical times you would expect uh there to be you know like a variation in your kick or low end it's it has this very like kind of fluid live feel to it now another thing i want to point out is yes there's this swirling tapestry but i do feel like there's also kind of this I guess part of the tapestry rather is like a change in the lead of said tapestry. So for example, right when the groove starts, I, to me, the main thing that I hear and think is worth focusing on, or maybe I shouldn't say worth focusing on, but it just seems to be the most prominent in the mix, uh, is this moan sound and then just like the kick in the bass. But I'd say the moan sound is like the lead. And then... So I like how for a while that's what we're focused on. Oops. But then, um, but then we get the introduction of this like ancient chord, this like anxious sounding chord. So we're still hearing the moan, you know, that's still like pretty forward in the mix. But now I, I feel like this feeling of this kind of like dread or anxiety is now it's 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 becoming pretty prevalent as well so now our, our lead is changing a bit so now we have like a, a new like horizon to kind of look at then of course like i said we have these other colors splashing in just to like keep making uh what we're looking at, like what we're hearing more interesting like with this vocoder thing <laughs> Okay, so we keep going, we keep going. And then I think the, the, okay, yeah. I think then the next like main change in lead is gonna be this new like, I don't know if it's a chord or a note, um, but this comes in and that starts to have a pretty big role. Let's, let me make sure nothing came before. Yeah, honestly at this point, like that moan is, is still there, but it's not even that loud. That's why I made it white here. Like that anxious sound is really, you know, coming into its own. That's the hopeful chord. And it's nice because as it comes in, that is when we have the uh, taking out of the low end. So that gives us a nice introduction. It really highlights the sound. That's really cool, actually, the more I think about it, because I feel like by dropping out that low end, that oftentimes gives you the feeling of, like, feeling higher. Like, um, you know, you don't have that strong base foundation, like, holding your body to the ground, which naturally, like, makes your body feel a little lighter. And then as you get that lightness from the taking out of the low end, you're having this introduction of this... Uh, which kind of makes you, like, look up and maybe feel a sense of, like, hope or something. 
And so now we keep going, and now this is kind of taking over from the anxiety thing a bit. They're going to be playing together, but it's at least like making its own uh, emotional mark in the track. So again, see now we've, we've shifted like from that moan to like anxiety with the moan to a little more anxiety to then hopeful. Uh, I know I'm... Yeah. Okay. And again, if you want the project file, you, you know how to get it. Please follow on Instagram. Uh, please check out my new record. Okay. <laughs> so... Okay, so now we get the new lead, which is going to be this weird phrase. It's actually 17 bars, I believe, um, which is the do-do, do-do. Does that 10 times, then it goes up, do-do, for seven. So yeah, 17 bar phrase, weird. Just weird. Don't want to talk, I don't want to say anything else about it. Cool, though. And so now... Yeah, so now you can see we have a strong foundation. We have like a rotating line of leads. And we have just a very continuously flowing um, tapestry around these leads. Very cool. All right, we keep going. And now we're going to get another like shifting of the lead. Uh, we're still going to be having this two note thing happening. We have, I think... There's so much is happening. Again, I did not want to just, I didn't want to map everything exactly. That was going to take so long. I just didn't want to do it. But hey, I did this. That, that, there's something for you. Um, but listen to how this new melody comes in. And it's, it, it might be an actual vocal or it could be like a vocal synth. That's, those would be my, my first two guesses. Not necessarily in that order. But um, yeah, hear that come in. It's going to be playing this nice, like, kind of up and down and up and down, I think, sort of uh, melody. So cool, right? So cool. Okay. And uh, here's another just like, this was crazy right here. This is crazy. Uh, let's, let, let me see how, they, how it was done. Let's see. Sounds like you take out the drum, you get the bass, you pitch shift the bass down and open up its filter. That's probably how you could get something sounding pretty close to that. All right, and then uh, and then you have another f percussive en enter in. Why not? Why not? It's this thing that I think it hits on the four. Do y'all feel like you're learning something? Hopefully, that happened. Okay, and then another. Okay, let's keep going. So I'm getting my brain's getting a little mushy because like, you, you you know, looking at this for a while, it's it's you know it's it takes it out of you. So now um, the bass line's changing. It's still hitting on every beat, but you can see it's going up and going down. 
Uh, let's see. How do I want to talk about that? Well, I mean, I guess in a way it's kind of becoming more of a lead element just because those changes feel kind of dramatic. But in this case, like the leads are staying consistent. Uh, yeah, so maybe you could think of it. Yeah, that's kind of interesting, I guess. Like, because uh, like if you were to try and make a track similar to this, there's a track called Milk by uh, Motorat. Kind of similar in the sense that I feel like it's just this very long build. Uh, why did I bring that up? Oh, I, I guess if you were trying to make a track like this or like Milk or something, maybe this could be an idea. And I think this actually happens in Milk. Not a think about it. I think it takes forever and then finally like the bass line changes. I think that happens. It'd be curious to see when these songs were written and to know if one was influenced by the other. I, I don't know. That's pure speculation. Do not... Uh, I, I don't know what's going on there. Or if anything's going on there. There might be nothing. I don't want to make conspiracies. Um, but okay, so basically... Um, Bass lines moving. Sorry, let me get it together. Let me just take a second. Yeah, so I guess if you like sat down, you're like, I wanna make a track like Collider. I'm gonna have a simple bass line. I'm gonna have a lot of lead elements and then I'm just gonna change everything around it so much. But eventually, I don't want to keep changing the lead, so now I'm actually going to change the bass line. But I'll change the bass line in a way that even though the bass line is changing, we're going to return to the root note. So it won't be that crazy. Because we're like not changing keys. I don't think the key is changing. At least because of the bass line. The key might change. Let's let me let me listen again. <laughs> Music theory people, hop in here. Because I, I would think that when the bass line and the melody, the two note lead change, that does seem like the key is changing. Like I feel like if I was, the only way I know this is I feel like if I was playing the guitar and soloing on this or something, I would have to maybe change where I'm soloing from. Okay, calling all music theory people, please inform us if the key is changing when this bass line changes. But okay, I'm, I think I'm just, I don't know how helpful I'm being anymore. So I'm just gonna breeze through the end. All right, so <laughs> you, you, you know what's going on kind of. I think I've done my part. So now eventually we're gonna get this breakdown. <laughs> We have these beautiful strings. They're really shining. We're just like going up to the heavens. We've just been on this huge tension ratcheting journey. And it would make sense that this is a great time to just really embellish some chords. Because it's it's nice to have no kick, no bass line. Just have some beautiful chords. So when you're in a club or whatever and you've been dancing forever and then you you can just chill for a second. You can just stand there and these pads enter your brain and everything's fine. You can just relax and just soak it in, soak in the vibes. And then you come back into it. Baseline is starting from a higher place. If I'm being honest, when I listened to this track yesterday, I think is when I initially broke it down. Once this part came in, I was like, okay, like this is fine. This the ending's cool or whatever, but you know, this is what we're talking about. The this for in my opinion, this this is the real business. I think more or less we just kind of like eventually fade out here. But let, let's listen to it. But I I hope I'm done talking for the most part. <laughs>
lovely outro, I gotta say. Track faded out, more or less. That's what happened. Um, one more thing I wanted to note, because I just found this interesting. When the bass line does change, it's this. It, it does this like up and down thing twice, uh, at least uh, the first time around. Like I think it moves again after over here. But uh, this is different from this. Listen how how you when you go up and then you start to come back down, it only happens for one bar here. But here it happens for two, for example. Cool. Again, just it's neat how much variation is going on. But okay, hopefully you got some uh, something out of this. I feel like I did. I mean, even when I'm... I was working on a track last night and... Uh, it was after, you know, because I, I did most of this breakdown yesterday, slash almost all of it, slash basically the entire thing, slash maybe take out the word basically, and just, but, um and I was working on a track and I was trying, it was, it was a more like cut and dry techno banger thing where you don't have such constantly modulating other elements, but... I was like, well, even though I'm making a more straightforward track, maybe I can, because, you know, I had a section where the whole track sounds good, but I have this one section where I added in some pads, and the pads don't work. They don't sound cool. And so I just remembered, like, oh, well, he, uh, well John was do using these, like, reverb smashes that were up, like, different from each other, and maybe I can, uh, yeah, and, like, maybe I actually don't need to, like, maybe I can just, like, throw some weird shit in at some almost like random times in this section and then I can mute the pad and then I can just kind of like have this more um, uh, like just textured context or something like that. Basically like this is already, I feel, I feel like I learned something from this breakdown or at, at least it's like in, gonna inform my productions more. I'm happy for that, but okay. Hopefully it did the same for you too. And if you're just a fan of the track, hopefully this, you know, hopefully you got something out of this. But okay, follow the channel, follow me on Instagram, buy the new record coming out with Anitha. It's okay to cry. It's going to be sweet. And um, yeah, just, uh, just keep doing you and have a good day.